I hope all is well. I hope all is going pretty good. Everybody all right? No, we may have some people sleep because it's kind of early. But hopefully y'all catch it on replay. Or, um, yeah. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So God had gave me a word this morning around 4 while I was in the dwelling place with God. And um, around 5, he gave me the scriptures to back it up with. And when I tell y'all, it just meant it's like it was so good. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to kind of go into it, okay? So without further ado, y'all buckle up and let's get this. Let's get this word in. And let's win our morning with God's word, okay? Let's get her done. Come on. God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we thank you for who you are and all that you do, Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus, that you are omnipresent, that you are here, God, with us even now, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I ask that you will cover us under your blood, God, and Lord, cover this video under your blood. Cover, um, cover, cover this word under your blood, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. And Father God, I ask that you'll forgive us, God, for the sins that we're aware of and for the sins that we're not aware of as well, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I ask that you'll please, God, bless this word, your word, to do exactly what you have intended for it to do, oh God. And use me, God, let it be none of me and all of you, in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we love you and we thank you for who you are and all that you do. We love you, Jesus, and Jesus, and Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, we say amen and amen, amen and amen. Okay, so um, let me just give y'all a brief description on where the word originated from, like how it came about. So I was in the dwelling place and um, I remember it was maybe around four o'clock and I was talking to God. Well, it was three o'clock when I was like around three something when I was talking to God. And um, I remember um, maybe around four when um god started to minister this song to me that he had me to write maybe a one or two years ago and the song is called it's not about me it's not about me and um a lot of times we make it about us when we start facing different situations or different obstacles different affliction you know we tend to make it about us and how do we make it about us and we know that we're making it about us and was is when we stop having peace from within you know a lot of times um us uh, how can i say it a lot of times when we start making it about us it leads to us doing things in our own strength which causes the unnecessary things or it causes um unpeace it, ha it has like no peace god is peace so if you are not in alignment with god and we all get out of alignment at some point at some times and it's just, and it's so good how God is because you can always get back in alignment, like repent and then it's a, a done deal. You're good. But then you have to also apply it. Now you have to also think that whatever the last word God spoke to you, you start back from there, you know, start back from the last thing that God has said to you, obey that, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, um, kind of how the word that's literally how the word originated um me personally I was just you know I need to God to talk to me you know um because man he's really needed in everything that we do like literally everything we do so y'all without further ado let's get into the scriptures that he gave me right so the first scripture that he gave me was Luke 12 and 48 so Luke chapter 12 verse 48 um, and it's the King James Version. However, it's, uh, I'm going to go over, I'm going to read two versions of it, okay? The KJV Version and then also the um, NIV Version, okay? So, uh, there we go. So, the King James Version of it is, But he that knew not and did commit, and did commit things worthy, things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. And then in the NIV translation it says, and this is still Luke twelve, verse forty eight. It says, but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. 
So with that, don't take, oh, thank you, Jesus. Instead of looking at your situation as, you know, um, as a bad thing um, or even as something to despise, look how, if you look how good and great your God is, you will see the goodness in it. Because the thing is, God, he wants you to be able to um, look at it as not punishment, you know, but for you to see him in it, see him through it, because it's not about you. It's not about me, but it's about God and his purpose and plan for our lives at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day, beginning of the day and at the end of the day. OK, so, yeah, God is just trying to uh, he's molding you and trying to mold also like the give you a different perspective on how to look at it. See him through it because at the end of the day, your own strength is only temporary to what God is doing and to what God is and to who God is. Do you hear me? Okay. Because God, one thing about God, whatever, God is faithful and what he has is long lasting. And that's why God wants us to look up to him because he's the only one that can turn the situation around. It's up to us to trust in him. And that's what I was saying about, um, I was talking about is the doing things in your own strength and being in and being out of alignment with God, the difference between them, you know, um, when you're in alignment with God, you have much more peace. You have peace when you're out of alignment, there's peace, there's unpeace and there's chaos. However, let me go to the next scripture that we'll be going over. Also, I just wanted to elaborate, mm, wanted to elaborate, let me elaborate. Okay. So what I do know is that depression is real. Anxiety is real. Those negative thoughts are real. Um, negative situations are real. Negative people are real. All these things are real, but God is always real too. God has always been real. So you remember how uh, before uh, my last video, I was talking about first responder and your first response, your first response and the first responder. Who will it be? You know, we have that natural one and we have that spiritual one. So... What do you well, in this case, it's the same thing. Who is your first responder? Well, who what's your first response? How are you responding to your situation? Are you responding in a uh in your own strength, doing things your own way? Or are you can are you going to God about it and letting him fight for you? And it's actually bringing me to my next word. However, I want to still go back just a little bit to the word that God gave me. Um when we are going through things. God is building something in us, okay, and through us. He's doing a work in us. He's removing something out of us and putting something in us, you know, and that's a part of being a living sacrifice for God. So the thing is, you may be going through some things, but I could you not, you're, you may go through the fire, but you won't get burnt. You might go through the fire, but you won't get burnt. So count it again, y'all. It's all joy. God is producing something, producing something in you, and he is removing something out of you. All right. So our next word, uh, the next scripture that God had gave me was Psalms. Um, the next scripture that God had gave me was Psalms 46, chapter um, Psalms chapter 46, verse 10 through 11. And in that it says, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let me read one more time, y'all. Okay, for the ones that didn't catch. <laughs> um, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Ain't that beautiful? Ain't that wonderful to know that you're not alone in this and whatever it is you're facing, that you're not alone? So I just break it down just a little bit. All right. So first it says, be still, be still and know that I am God. God said, be still and know that I am God. So what is being still? Sometimes it is literal, but a lot of the times when it comes to being still in God, it's trusting in him. Trusting in him, knowing that he will and that he is, knowing that he will do, mm -mm, knowing that he is who he is and that he will do what he said he will do. God don't make empty promises. He does not make empty promises. So first acknowledging God is who he is and also that he will do what he said he would do. 
You just have to trust him in this. And if God brought you to if he brought you to it, like I said before, he'll get you through it. So whatever it is, it's even with anxiety. I have like a whole story about anxiety. Um back then. Um and how so for the ones that may be experiencing anxiety, um, I was gonna say that I have been there. Like when I say I've been there, um some people think like it's not like a switched off thing, so they can just switch off. Well, with God, it is. And when I say it is, not that it's not a process. I'm not saying that it's not a process and that because it's, it was a process, okay? But the thing is, I overcame it, and it was only by God. So it's not, a, I don't want to say it's a switch off, switch on type of thing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that God can still use that to produce something even better. Y'all, let me just share this one testimony. I have to share it. And I hope it blesses someone who may be experiencing anxiety. Um, heavy and I had severe anxiety at one point. Uh, my freshman, my second semester of my freshman year of college. Um, remember, uh, that anxiety got so bad, and I don't claim it as mine because it's not mine, it wasn't mine to keep. Um, however, at that time, the anxiety that I had was so bad to where I couldn't even, I didn't want to walk down the street, I didn't want to walk down the street, I didn't want to go anywhere because of the what ifs. You know, what if this happened? It was the fear. It was so much fear. Um, and y'all may see, like, in high school, I was, I've was always been talking to you Girls I always talk a lot. I like to talk. I love, I love people. I like people, you know? I like people. I like people. Um, so the thing was, in high school, I was always talkative. You know, I love being around people. In college, I like, now, like, I'm still in college, but in the same sense, like, I love talking to people now. But at one point of my life, in my freshman year of college, in my second semester, um, I experienced a, a situation to where I um, became, like, it, it kind of triggered um, anxiety. And when I tell y'all it scared the girl, like, I was very fearful at that time. It was so bad to where... I had, I remember my second semester of college, I had like some of my homegirls to stay in the room with me. Um, Cause at this point I didn't want to sleep in there by myself. It was just like a lot going on, but um, all is well now, all is good now. So, um, but it was just, it was a lot. And I'm not gonna lie, it took me some time. It took me like a good, I wanna say to recover, like just fine um, and to a better me though. It, when I tell you the experience, Doing it, I it was so hard because I was just like, Lord, I just want this to end. You know, I don't, I don't want to fear. I don't want to have to live like this. I don't want to know like the what ifs. Like I don't want to keep doing this to myself. And when I gave it to God, I just made I imagine God every everywhere that I went. I could you not, and um, it got me through everything. I could you? Oh my gosh, when I could you not, I literally would have to imagine Jesus everywhere I went because I was scared. I was scared, and I, but I knew I wanted to, um, I knew I wanted to get my education, you know, not that it was going to guarantee success. I knew I was going to be successful because of God, but, um, and I've learned that throughout the years. Um, however, I, you know, I was definitely determined, even more determined as I am now, but it was like, I knew I wanted the education, so I would literally have to imagine God like literally by a tree that I was walking to to class. Cause at times I was just like, oh my gosh, I hope I don't pass out. I hope I don't this, I hope that. And then I was just like, I just, there was so many negative thoughts. So I had to just imagine God, imagine the light following me, imagine the light being next to me. And when I tell you God was in me, even with class, when my heart would beat so fast, just because like at this point, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm overthinking, I'm overthinking. It was just a lot. And when I tell you after maybe a year or two, was a better me I was a better dream I could you not I wasn't the same person because I experienced what I experienced however it produced a it produced a better me like I didn't want to be the same person because then I grew even more in God I was able to trust God a lot more because at this point I had to trust I can trust myself and I still don't trust myself I can't trust I don't trust anyone but God and it's just like now, though, I see where I see how God used that situation where I thought I just wanted to be done with it. Because I was like, I don't want to keep living like this. I don't want to keep living in fear. I wanted to be done with that. And just to see where it came, like how God used that situation to get, get me closer to him. It was an uh, advantage for me. The enemy you may have bring it about my harm, but God used it for my good. And now here I am talking to y'all, encouraging y'all about it because God can do it. And he's done it for me. 
He can deliver you from depression. He can deliver you from anxiety. He can deliver you from soul ties. He can deliver you from a He can deliver you from whatever you allow him to deliver you from. You have to agree with God. He's not going to just, God is, I always say this, God is such a gentleman that he won't force you to do anything. If anything, his grace is going to just, he going to, he going to watch you until you need him. Until you, there's no more of, until there's like a, you know what, God, I'm, I'm here. I, I can't do this no more. You know, it's more of a surrender. It's like, Lord, your my will, your will for my will, like my will for your will, if that makes sense. So basically, surrendering your life to God, in exchange for His, in exchange for His will to be done, right? So yeah. So with that, y'all, just know that with God, all things are possible, and that you're not alone in this. And also, it says, um, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Y'all, do y'all know what a fortress is? A fortress. So a fortress is actually, what is a fortress? A fortress is a military stronghold, especially a stronghold fortified town fit for a large garrison. So um, actually when we go to fortified, fortified, it says, hold on, there we go. Um, it is of a place provided with defensive works as protection against attack. Protection against attack. So you can hide in Jesus. He's your fortress. He's the one that's going to protect you and defend you from the enemy. He's going to protect you from the enemy. And he's going to defend you at any... He's going to defend you because you, you are his. You know how it's amazing. Uh, I hear uh, some people say, you know, when they love, you know, they'll protect you whether you're wrong or right. And God, he loves unconditionally. Like he will protect you. The Lord, he's going to protect you even when you're wrong or even when you are right. He's going to protect you. Okay. So it's for us to run to him. Instead of running to ourselves, we can protect ourselves like that. Only physically. And the way that we protect ourselves spiritually is by going to God. Going to our first response. Going to his word. Going to our first um, our first responder. God will always respond to you first if you allow him to. If you go to him first, oh, he gonna definitely, he gonna, you know, have that one call like I had mentioned before, when I had gotten to a wreck, um, like last year or I think it was like last year or like a year or two ago, um, I called on Jesus, y'all. Your girl was, I was like, oh my gosh, your girl was like Jesus, like Jesus, you know, he was the only one that could stop it. And right after I called on Jesus. I called my mama, you know, it was my mama next in line, but they were my, they were my safe place and Jesus is still my place, safe place. Our families can be our, uh, our parents, you know, can be our safe places as well. So it's just like, but the first safe places uh, for me, I know it's Jesus, y'all, because Jesus, now he the king of my family, he the king of my mama now. So, hey, that's what we do. But anyway, y'all, it was two points that, um... Uh, I need this to go over before we get into the last scripture, okay? And the two points is to remember it's not about you. It's not about you, okay? It's not about me. It's not about none of us, but it's about God. And when it's about God, that means that we have to take ourselves out of the situation. You know how um, it says, um, like, when you follow God, you have to deny yourself. You have to deny your flesh. It's like you dying to yourself and following God. You have to die to yourself because whatever God asks you may not be easy, but it's for you to just trust him through it. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's, family can also be like, your parents can also be a safe place. However, for me, I know Jesus is the king of my family, so I'll call on him first. Okay. But, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but the last, um, point, um, so the two key points was to be still and know that God is God, but also not, but and also um, the last one is to render all unto God. And when I looked up render, it means to uh, provide or give, to provide or give. And the scripture that God had led me to is like I had I don't know why, but I had like um, it. What came to my mind was cast all your, your cares, you know, upon God because he cares you know, for you. So um, it was uh first Peter five and seven and it says cast all and this is the new uh international version, the NIV version. It says cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 
says to be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the faith of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. The same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power, to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. That's what it says. And when I tell y'all, that was beautiful. I don't know about y'all, but that was beautiful. Um, it's amazing how we can cast all of our anxiety, all of our worries onto God because he can handle it. He's the only one that can handle it. And keep in mind, he has this world to think about, like all his children, all of us. He has all of us. Like, I understand that, you know, taking care of one child is like for us human beings, like, it's uh we did a like we really do need um a village to raise a baby like uh children it's more than like what i realized having nieces and nephews is way more you know they need your love they need that attention they need guidance it's way more to it and especially with them like even been having more than one you know so just imagine god god have a whole bunch of kids like he we it's a we have it's a lot of us it's a lot of us, and I don't want to say just roaming around, but in the same sense, there are some that are lost, some that are found, and he's still telling us to cast our cares onto him. You know, he's still telling us that he cares for us. He's telling all of us, not just one. He's telling all of us, hey, I got it. Cast your cares onto me. And he's talking about billions, probably more than that. And it's just like, it's so amazing how he still, how we can still take that, that uh, how can I say it? How we can still be solid in them. How that we know that he can really do it. Like nobody else on this world can tell us that they can protect us completely. And be able to. Because it's just not humanly possible. Only God has that reassurance that I can do this. I can do this. The thing is, the things that happen in the spiritual realm, it has to happen in the spiritual realm before it happens in the natural realm. You know? So God is that first response in the spiritual realm. And also this first, so our first responder in the uh spirit round as well he's a first response we we have he has to be our first response his word jesus word and i cast down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of god and i bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ jesus in jesus mighty name i plead the blood of jesus against every demonic attack that has been sent out to destroy or uh, come against the peace of my mind or any of my uh sisters and brothers and i in christ's mind or even our hearts god in the name of jesus god i plead the blood of jesus against it right now god by the power that's in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name um and i can't move in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, so, yeah. Your response should be against the enemy is God's word. And your first responder is always God. God will respond to you when you are continuing to keep him in. That's the, that's the only way that you can win. Because it's not about you, remember. It's about God. Um, so, yeah. It says, to be alert and of a sober mind. And of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Resist him. Standing firm in the faith, in the word, in the word, in the faith, in the word, in the word. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So um, resist him. Standing firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of suffering. Meaning, y'all, we're not alone in this. I'm not alone in it. You're not alone in it. We're all, that's why we're all here. Even now, we're all going through something together. And it's for us to win, okay? And so the next scripture is, um, it says, And God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast um to him to jesus to him be the power forever and ever amen that's what it says y'all so god he got us and he's looking for y'all to he's looking for all of us not just y'all me too he's looking for all of us to turn to him and not so much to our emotions not so much to our you know what the world says not to ourselves but to him, okay?
So without further ado, y'all, let's get it in. Let's go. Y'all know what time it is? It's salvation call. <laughs> for the salvation call, for the ones that may not know exactly what is the salvation call, it is actually when you just get called to salvation. I'm not your say. I'm not the savior. God is. Jesus is. I'm just guiding you to Him, and it's through His Word. So if you uh, maybe be a, a believer, you was a believer and you strayed away and just want to rededicate, hey, now is the time. Now is the time to rededicate to God, to rededicate to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Did you hear me? And if you are a first time, just want to give your life to Christ, you're like, you know what? I'm tired of doing things myself. You know what? I want to get in alignment with God. I, I'm, that's, what, that's what I want to do then you're in the right place, okay? <laughs> so um, the um, salvation scripture is um, Romans 10 and 9. It says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So without further ado, that's what we're about to do. Y'all just repeat after me, okay? All right. Okay, so repeat after me, y'all. Say, Father God, Yahweh, I declare, that my, I declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you, Father God, Yahweh, you raised him from the dead. I am saved. I am saved. In Jesus' mighty name. There we go, y'all. Woo woo. Y'all did it. Y'all did it. Woo. I'll pay so much. <laughs> but y'all, congratulations on y'all salvation, on getting saved and now making Jesus your Lord and Savior. So, in that case, that means don't just make him your savior. Make him your lord, too, over everything, all right? Without further ado, it's been real. And y'all, happy Wednesday. <laughs> Bye, y'all.